Dear, oh dear. Grace, are you out today? Quite unlike you, considering it's a weekday. That's a strange question. Are you by some chance at our house again? Oh, well, that's a bit rude. Usually you start the conversation with a hello. Maybe even a thank you for the message, Angela. What was Michael thinking? I don't know what possessed him to marry a woman this rude. My sincere apologies, Angela. My straightforward nature tends to give off the wrong impression. I'm just so surprised that you seem to have shown up without warning again. I hope you didn't take Michael's key again. How dare you complain about me coming to visit? It's my right to visit my family. What kind of ungrateful woman would take issue with that? I always knew you were no good right from the beginning. I could see just the type of woman you are, even if Michael couldn't. Well, that's quite the coincidence. I saw straight through you as well, and ever since I first met you. You're nothing but trouble. You better watch yourself. Didn't your parents teach you to respect your elders? Whatever you might think of me, I gave birth to your husband and raised him into the man he is today. You could at least show some gratitude for that. Angela, believe me, I do appreciate what you've done. But the fact remains that if you're going to take it upon yourself to break into our house, you're causing us trouble. Now please, leave my house and let me get back to work. I'm quite busy, actually. Huh. I didn't even have to tell you I was in the house, you know. One more thing to thank me for. On top of doing the cleaning and cooking for you while you're out doing God only knows what... I can only imagine you're just out all day fooling around with other men. You're certainly not taking care of your family. What would Michael do if it wasn't for me? I shudder to think. Oh god. Please don't tell me you're at the house cooking again. If it's possible, I would rather not have you filling my fridge with junk. Even your own son agrees that the food is not fit for human consumption. How dare you! Michael would never say something like that. He loves my cooking. Maybe back before he knew any better. But I can assure you, he's not a fan of the stuff you've been cramming our fridge with. He took one whiff of the last batch and threw it out. He said maybe I should get the recipe from you. Yeah, and what's wrong with that? If he wants you to get the recipe, that means he likes it. You made it sound like you both hate my cooking. I mean, it sounds like he wants to show appreciation to you, but maybe he'd prefer it if I made it? Don't dance around it. Just tell it to me straight. Does he enjoy the food or not? I told you he threw it away last time. How much more straight can I get? I can't believe it. I've made that for him since he was a child. Well, I don't know, Angela. Maybe you've lost your touch? I can't eat it either. I did try it first. It's not like either of us wants to be rude to you. I certainly didn't want to waste any of it, so I used to ask Michael to try and take it to work with him. Okay, so he decided to eat it. What's the problem here? I don't care if you eat it or not. As long as no food gets wasted, everyone should be happy. The key words were used to. He did try and take it to work a couple times, but we gave up pretending. Recently, it all just goes straight in the trash, I'm sorry to say. All of it? I put my heart and soul into that food. It takes me hours each week. Well, I really wish you wouldn't. You almost put him off home cooking altogether. Michael didn't even want to try my food either at first. It was like he thought all home cooked food was poison or something. Luckily, I was able to coax him into it, and he's quite happy with my cooking. Can we go back a few steps here? I still can't get over the fact that he's throwing away the food I'm cooking. You have no idea how shocked I am right now. Well, I'm really sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but again, I've asked you repeatedly to stop making it. 
You know Michael loves you absolutely to death, but even he can't eat it anymore. He always complains about it being too spicy to comfortably eat while somehow also having no flavor. Makes sense that he craves food that actually tastes like food. Hey, I need to know, so answer honestly. How long has this been going on for? He can't have been doing this from the beginning, right? Somewhere close to the beginning. I told you he took it to work at first, but that was maybe for a week after we moved in together. It didn't last very long. It wasn't long before he was throwing it all away, Tupperware and all. Even so, you've still been coming and preparing food, correct? Um, yes, I have. It's my job as a mother. Angela, you've brought him this far, but he's a married man and he lives with me now. You don't need to cook for him anymore. I swear, I keep telling him he needs to be straight with you, but clearly he hasn't. He should be happy with how much he takes your feelings into consideration. But surely you've noticed the way he sighs whenever you bring stuff over? Now you know why. Just one more headache to deal with. Can you please stop acting like I'm torturing you guys? I am just trying to give my family food. For your information, Michael hasn't said one bad thing about it. I know! That's the whole problem! Michael loves you way too much to tell you how much he dislikes it. Let me tell you something, though. I've seen him eat it. The man cries as he's eating it. Now, it's not like I don't understand his desire to go easy on you. Usually, I have a lot more restraints saying this type of thing to people. But you've been insulting me on a daily basis. I've just had it. I can't muster the sympathy anymore. I have never been this insulted in my whole life. I made those meals for him to enjoy. Don't treat me like I'm trying to poison him. Well, I don't know what to tell you. A mother's love isn't a good enough spice anymore. I've got to say, though, I do think it's a bit amusing that a mother with cooking this destructive goes so far out of her way to make meals for her son. All the while not knowing how much pain he's under from eating it. You cheeky little brat. Don't think you're above me. I've had it with talk about food. You want to talk about suffering? Maybe he suffers because he's married to such a disrespectful, ungrateful wench. You really know how to take the spotlight and put it on others. What's your evidence that I'm the reason he's suffering? Has he been saying things behind my back? You think I don't know my cooking sucks? I've known it my whole life. Michael always pushed through and eats it anyway. The least you could do as a wife is lend a hand and help him out. What do you mean, lend a hand? Oh, I get you. Maybe I should be more persuasive in convincing him to tell you the food sucks directly? The mouth on this girl! Fine. How about this, then? I'm going to take it upon myself to put this house in order. That should have been your job, but obviously you're not up to it. From this day on, I'll be living here with you guys. Get used to it. Who are you to declare what should and shouldn't happen? You aren't going to live in our house. We said from the start there's no way you could live with us. Besides, where would you sleep? All the rooms are full and I don't want to come down for breakfast to find you in the living room. You have a home office, don't you? That's my new bedroom. In your dreams? I'm going to give it a good clean right now. If memory serves me correctly, there is a lock on this door. What do you need an office for anyway? A wife's job is to cook for and clean up after her husband. This is something an old, stubborn woman can't understand. Times are changing, lady. You're not bad at getting on people's nerves. I guess that's what they taught you in college. I'll show you, though. This is such a nice door you've installed for yourself. Let's see how it looks after I break it down. Oh, wow. So you're just going to get someone else to do your dirty work for you, are you? You can't even come and talk to me face to face. Are you some kind of chicken? I told you I was busy. 
How's your memory recently? Anyway, I take it my secretary has taken care of things. I'll have to do something nice for him later. You. I hate you so much. I can't believe you have me kicked out of my own son's home. How can you treat your husband's mother like this? You being his mother is irrelevant to me at this point. Now will you please just go home and stop harassing me? You think I'm going to give up that easily? Whether you like it or not, I'm moving in today. I'm going to clear out that room come hell or high water and make it my own. When you get home, I expect to see all of your stuff out on the lawn and me set up in that room for life. Over my dead body! I must have said this a million times. That room is solely for my work. There's things in there that are integral to my job. You do remember what I do, right? I'm getting tired of explaining it to you. Of course I remember. You're managing your own company. Big deal. If you can't take care of your own husband, I don't know why you think you can take care of a whole company. That's the first thing that makes you the worst wife a man could have. Okay, I think you're taking your hatred for me a little too far now. It's downright disrespectful. How is a man supposed to feel knowing his wife earns considerably more than he does? Maybe if the housework was done to an acceptable standard, he'd overlook you achieving more than him. But guess what? You can't even clean up. The most basic job of a good wife, and it's above you. I've told you so many times to just hand the company over to Michael. Do the right thing. And yes, before you ask, I do remember what you always say about that. And fair enough, the company might be better off under your care. But sorry to break it to you, honey. You're failing as a wife. And kicking me out of the house was just one more in a long line of failures. With any luck, it'll finally be the straw that broke the camel's back. Will this never end? I've been putting up with this from you constantly for what seems like forever. Do you really think I'm just going to do whatever you want? Do you really think you have any power over me? Get over yourself. The world doesn't revolve around you or your precious boy. Get it through your head, Angela. Please. To answer your question, yes, you should be listening to us. I'm getting a migraine from all this. A wife's job is to support her husband. Everything you do should be for his benefit. The fact that you act so selfishly is exactly what makes you a horrible wife. Don't you realize that? Having the self-confidence and independence to work on my own is what makes me so good at managing my company. Do you have any idea how hard it is? Oh, get over yourself. All of this is beside the point anyway. Send that skinny little wimp secretary back over here and tell him to let me back in the house and give me back my key. Oh, and just so you know, I've already contacted Michael. I'm sure he'll be here soon, and I'm sure he will be very disappointed with what you've done to me. You did what now? You shouldn't have talked to Michael. Oh, but I did, and let me tell you. He was very displeased with you kicking me out. You don't realize the immensity of your actions, do you? I'm his mother, for Pete's sake. The immensity? You not being able to get into my house doesn't compare to the amount of work I'm doing right now. Oh, whatever. Let me just straight up tell you something. Separate with Michael. Get a divorce. Get out of his life. Hmm, okay. So that's what we're going to talk about now, is it? We've been talking about it the whole time, if you haven't realized. I keep telling you all the reasons why you're a horrible wife for my boy. What do you think I've been building toward? You. Gone. As a good mother, I'll take care of him. I'll find a lovely lady with great looks. I have no idea why he chose to be with you in the first place. You were never the right woman for a great man like him. Whoa, you're really serious about this, aren't you? A great man? Bit of an exaggeration, don't you think? 
So you've been planning on a divorce between us? Of course. You know a mother only wants the best for her son. That certainly isn't you. Let's just start with your face. Well, as little said about that, the better. I couldn't believe my eyes when he first brought you home. In fact, we can just open and close this case right there. Enough said. Now if everything is clear, let's consider this settled. There's no need to come home tonight. I'm kicking you out and I'll be living with my beloved son once again. Excuse me? You're going to kick me out of my own house. Yes, I'm kicking you out. This isn't your house, it's Michael's. Seeing as I'm his mother, that also makes it mine. You're just a freeloader now. Go find your own place to live. Even if it was Michael's house, that doesn't give you any right to be there or to kick me out. Michael will listen to me. He's a good boy and I raised him well. As long as Michael is king of this castle, my word is law. So you think Michael has the right to kick me out of my house? Talking with you is like talking with a spoiled child. There is just no point. Enough with the defeated mewling. Just get out. Divorce my precious Michael. Get out of both of our lives. I'll make sure his next girl is not an ugly brat that can't even clean the house. You know what? By all means, I am happy to leave. However, you think the two of you can afford to live there? The rent is $4,000 a month. I hope your retirement fund is looking pretty good. Huh? You pay that much a month? That's absurdly expensive. I know. That's exactly what I said. And that's just the rent, by the way. It's not even counting the utilities. Your precious son Michael was the one so persistent in living here, though. Despite that, the lease is in my name. That can't be. Just so you get a clear picture, let me tell you how much Michael really earns. A measly $2,000 a month. As you can imagine, that nowhere near covers the rent. Maybe you guys would be okay depending on how much you've got squirreled away for retirement, but Michael definitely has no hope of keeping on top of things by himself. Not that any of that matters, though, because I'll be cancelling the lease. You guys can talk to the management company and try and take over the lease if you want. I don't care what you do. Huh? Wait, I don't understand. You're not going to pay it for us? Were you really expecting me to pay $4,000 a month for my ex and his crazy mother to live in my old house? Why in the world would I ever do that? The only thing I'm going to do is cancel my lease and get my divorce papers prepared as soon as possible. Oh, well, with that new piece of information, let's rethink this divorce. <laughs> but you seemed so excited for it just a few minutes ago. You're giving me whiplash over here, Angela. Well, there's no use being hasty. I realized I didn't really give you a chance to give your opinion. I'll give you my opinion. I've reached my limit putting up with you two imbeciles. I've been thinking about this divorce for a long time, actually, and now is as good a time as any. I suppose I should thank you. Wait, don't be so hasty about this. By the way, what were you planning to tell Kevin? Don't tell me you were just going to move in here without even telling your husband about it. That doesn't sound like something a good wife would do. Don't you worry yourself about Kevin. He would have understood. Well, if you say so. It's got nothing to do with me anyway. Anyway, I'm going to finish up with work and head home. When I get back, let's talk more about that divorce, shall we? No, wait a second. How about you think this over? Is a divorce really what you want? You know, I think it really is. In fact, I'm going to bring my lawyer with me. It's better to get this over and done with, right? With my lawyer, we can probably finish up by the end of the night. Wait, Grace. Hear me out, please. Don't take all this too seriously. You know I was joking, right? You really don't need to get this divorce.
Angela, did you come to my office? I got a call from reception saying some strange woman tried to get in to see me. Ah, yes. That was me. I'm glad you noticed. If you knew it was me, why didn't you let me in? Because you don't work here and you didn't have an appointment? Should be obvious. I might not work here, but I am family. Well, former family, to be more precise. You're not my mother-in-law anymore. Well, yes, that's true. But we could still chat as friends. I was wondering, how are you lately? Did you remarry by any chance? Not wasting any time, are you? It's only been six months since Michael and I divorced. Getting married again takes a lot more time than that. Why are you asking me about my marriage status? What do you want, Angela? No, it's nothing. I'm just asking a friendly question. It's just, you know that Michael hasn't remarried either. And I know he misses you an awful lot. Nope, not interested. Sorry. You really came all the way to my office just to try and spring that piece of unpleasantness on me? I was thinking it would be something more important. I really need your help, though. I want to apologize for everything I said before. I was really out of place. Michael and I had a massive fight about a month ago. He hasn't talked to me since. I really want to reconnect with him. What does that have to do with me? Oh, I see. You think if Michael and I got together, I'd be able to convince him to love his mama again. You really think I want to do that just for you? Get real. No, that's not it. Just hear everything I have to say. You'll see where I'm coming from. He's been going through a lot since the divorce. The divorce with you wasn't even his fault, so he went crazy when he found out. He had to move back in with us because he couldn't afford your old place. But Kevin ended up kicking him out about a month ago because he was getting violent. All of this is happening because of me. I want to make up for all that I've done. Well, it's not entirely your fault. You might have ruined his life, but he's an adult and doesn't have any excuse to get violent. Although I might get violent too if I had to eat your cooking again. <laughs> really, Grace? Don't give me that. You just asked me to get back together with a man whose own father kicked him out for being too violent. To be honest, I'm really bad at explaining this type of thing. You'll have to forgive me. It's just, he's been non-stop blaming me ever since the two of you got divorced. You can imagine that over time, I began to feel quite guilty about it. To think even someone like you can feel something like guilt. I never would have thought it. Come on, that's not exactly fair. I'm not an entirely bad person. So what I am hoping is that you will forgive me for my past behavior. Following that, I'd like you to make up with Michael in whatever way you can. Of course, I know you will say it's not possible, but the least you could do is try. Trying is better than nothing. Okay, I've listened to what you had to say, and I'm going to politely say that I'm not inclined to help. Sorry. I've cut my ties with both of you, and my life has been better for it. I have no intention of letting either of you back into my life. What? Hey, we can at least be friends, right? No, you're my ex-husband's mother. We were never friends to begin with. I just want to support him in what little way I can. It's because of me that it's all turned out like this. If I hadn't pushed you, you two wouldn't be divorced and he wouldn't be so out of control. What a hassle. Look, I've listened to everything you've said, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't really care how I feel about this, right? You just want me to try and make up with Michael like that's going to magically make everyone happy. What do you mean? I care about what you feel. If there's something you're not happy with, I want you to tell me right away so we can figure it out. You've clearly been ignoring what I've been saying because I said I don't want anything to do with you. Not as friends, not as family, nothing. If you really care about my feelings, then listen to what I'm saying and leave me alone. I'm sorry about that. I just feel like I'm under a lot of pressure. 
I'm not thinking straight. Under pressure from what? Well, you know. As a mother, it's hard to accept that your son wants nothing to do with you anymore. He was my little baby boy up until now. Okay, I understand that. But again, this has nothing to do with me. It's your problem, and one that you brought entirely on yourself. Now, I've got to go. I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about, so please do me a favor and don't contact me again. Wait, what about some dinner? I didn't want to give this apology over text. I should have done it in person. Please give me another chance to do it right. What do you think? Who can turn down a good meal? Naturally, it would be my treat. Do you have time today? No, I'm busy today. Well, there's the cafe near your office, right? Let's meet up there for a coffee at least. Let's say around six o'clock. Come on, give me a proper chance to apologize. It'll just take a few minutes. Boy, oh boy. This is not what I need today. You can do whatever you want. Nothing is stopping you. Really? Thanks. I'll see you soon. Where were you? I thought you were going to come. Was it you that sent him there? You mean Kevin? Yeah, of course. I knew it. You set me up. Why would you do that? I don't understand. I just wanted to apologize to you. Well, you see, Kevin told me I should contact him if anything happened. Huh? You're keeping in contact with Kevin? I heard he kicked you out of the house recently as well. Wait, what? He told you that? Why? Why? I don't know. I guess he thought I deserved to know about Michael's cheating. What do you mean, cheating? I have no idea what you're talking about. Really now? Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. You force your son's wife out of the picture and then move your son back into your house. Then you go looking for a new wife for him. Someone that better suits whatever twisted vision you have for a daughter-in-law. Next, you get in contact with a woman from your husband's office and somehow convince her to come over. My details from here are fuzzy. But I'm guessing after that, you either blackmailed her or hypnotized her. However you did it, she decided that she likes Michael and they move in together. What do you think? Have I got it done correctly? Okay, and so what? That was ages ago. It's meaningless now. But then that didn't go so well either, so Michael ended up blaming you for everything again. Then the girl talked to Kevin and told him what you guys were up to, and so he kicked you out of the house as well. Now both your son and your husband are angry with you, and you have no place to stay. As the last course of action you could take, you appeal to me to help make Michael forgive you. What do you think so far? Please have some mercy in your heart. I'm a mother. If you understand everything going on, surely you must feel sorry for me even just a little bit. I'm begging you. You can't let another person suffer like this. I'll be out on the streets at this rate. You can't let someone my age sleep in some park. No home, no money, no job. When I say it out loud, it kind of has a nice ring to it. Please don't make fun of me. I'm very serious about this. My son has turned his back on me. I carried him in my stomach for nine months and this is the thanks I get. Even though I protected him all these years, I protected him and his secret mistress for so long. And for what? Just to be thrown aside. I'm the only one apologizing. He isn't going out of his way to talk to you. So please accept my apology and give me one last chance. Just this one time and you don't have to speak with me again. Interesting. Mind if I share with you some messages from Michael himself? He says you were the one who set him up with that other girl. Oh, he's messaging you as well? Unfortunately, let's see what else he had to say. I love you, Grace. I miss you so much.
You're my one and only. I've finally seen the error of my ways. It's all my mother's fault. I should have never listened to her. I'm so sorry for everything. Please let me make it up to you. How about dinner? Are you free tonight? Hello? Grace? Are you there? <laughs> like mother, like son. Eerie how similar you two sound. You sent me these messages just today, by the way, while you've been talking to me. It was starting to bug me, so I blocked him. I don't need that nuisance in my life. I can't believe this. And you're next, by the way. Anyway, enjoy talking about this with your husband. Unfortunately, he can't just wash his hands of both of you as easily as I can. I'm sure he's going to do his best, though. This is horrible. Why am I the only one suffering from this? Do you think it's just you? You'd be mistaken. Do you know why your son decided to try and patch things up with me out of nowhere all of a sudden? He received a very special package today. I gathered up all the evidence of his cheating. I'm going to be using them to petition a nice change to our alimony agreement. You have evidence showing that he cheated? That's right. He panicked and messaged me straight away after he saw it. He said it was all your fault, so you should have to pay his alimony for him. <laughs> that spoiled brat! How dare he! I stumbled on a juicy little detail while I was looking into his cheating and gathering whatever bits of information I could. I think you'll like it. Apparently, you actually paid a woman to sleep with him? Oh, you even found out about that. Yes, Angela. I found out about just about everything. I'm going to have to agree with your son on this one. You bear an awful lot of responsibility for what happened. So I'm going to be suing you for purposefully trying to break up my marriage. Oh, God. Well, I guess things can't possibly get any worse for me now, at least. That's the spirit. Once you get a mailing address sorted out, be sure to give it to my lawyer so we can send you the papers once we file the lawsuit. She'll be sending you a message really soon, and then she'll be dealing with you on my behalf from now on. Have a good life, Angela. Michael's father contacted me a few hours after that. It turns out that he was able to get messages between Angela and the woman from his office, proving that Angela definitely paid her to start dating Michael. That was the cherry on top of my nice bundle of evidence, so my lawyer got busy getting everything filed. A few months later, around the court date, the two imbeciles managed to start messaging me again, begging me to forgive them, but I just blocked them again. They tried it one more time after that, and then my lawyer threatened to file another suit against them for harassment, and they finally gave up. I have no idea what those two are up to at the moment, but my alimony is still coming in every month, and I'm enjoying life as much as I want. <laughs>